for the shoulder. You want one. Last week? True. You want one. They tried to push out the heart and Burke's like, no, no, no. We got next week. Oh, yeah, spend yeah, Wednesday morning and deal with that. All right. It is 6 30 p.m. So at this time, we will begin our Adrian City Commission work study session for February 20th, 2023. Roll call, please. Mayor Heath. Present. Mr. Hope. Present. Mr. Roberts. Present. Mr. Miller. Present. Mr. Strayer's absent. Mr. Castleberry. Present. Mr. Gow. Present. All commission members present with the exception of Mr. Strayer. At this time, I will turn it over to our city administrator, Greg Elliott. Thank you, Mayor. We have one scheduled item for the pre-meeting tonight, which was a recreation project update. I proposed that for the pre-meeting and thought that our parks and recreation director would be here <laughs> to give it to you, but turns out he's not. He's on a plane back from Vegas. So I will do my best to give that to you. And then I hope we'll have some time left over. I also uh, want to talk to you about uh, food trucks and downtown parking lots. If you need some action on that, I want to report. <clears throat> so uh, recreation is, uh, we're getting back into recreation game, of course. And so that's, that's particularly important that we uh, hit the ground running here on a number of fronts. The main reason I wanted to put this on is because uh, we've had some activity on the pickleball front. Uh, you recall we didn't uh, get that in last construction season, and uh, you asked uh, Jeremiah to go out for bids on the construction. He did do that. Uh, we got one bid, which is from Cregoff. It is very substantially higher than what was in the original budget. So we had budgeted forever. The history of this thing that we had planned on essentially painting some lines on the old uh, uh, ice rink slab and putting up some fencing. And turns out that's not a very good idea because it's extremely flat and holds water. So, uh, you know, we kind of knew that it was going to be more than the $75,000 that we had budgeted. Uh, turns out it's almost, a, well, over $100,000. Uh, the bids came in at 182 250 uh, as opposed to the 75 that was in the budget. So we're kind of trying to figure out how we, I mean, we can obviously fill the gap and you, you make clear your commitment to that. Uh, so if we have to fill it from fund balance, we'll do that. Uh, there's no more ARPA. The 75 came from our ARPA allocation. There's really not any more of the funds available. So uh, the fund balance or Jeremiah is hopeful that uh, uh, we can be competitive with the Spark grant uh, through the DNR this year. In past years, these grant programs weren't available to us because we didn't have an up-to-date Parks and Rec master plan. Now that we do, uh, that uh, pantheon of grant opportunities is open. So he's uh, determining whether he wants to go that route or he, he will apply for the grant either way this year, the grant opportunity, uh, but it may be for some of the other projects that I'm going to mention that uh, he decides not to do it with pickleball. The, the drawback may be that uh, he'll have to have his, he may have to have his bidder uh, revise their numbers because uh, because the Spark grant is reusing federal funds, uh, therefore what, what are called Davis Bacon wages have to be paid to the uh, contractors, employees that do the work. It's basically prevailing wage law. And so a lot of times that's higher than what uh, contractors are paying in a project costs. So he needs to still explore that, but we're committed to a, a June 1st cons uh, construction start with the ball cards out of here. Uh, how, course, course. How, many, how many courts do we, do we say we're talking about now? I knew there were going to be trick questions. <laughs> I think we're at four and at six, and so I think six, right? it's for sure. Yeah, I have not seen the good back. And we do a full perimeter fencing around that. You don't really need to do a, a full fence around it because it's like a wiffle ball, it doesn't really go anywhere. Uh, and, and so 
if anything, the fencing will be kind of between courts to keep balls from going from court to court. Right. I don't think we're planning to do all the fencing around the road. Thanks. Uh, the other thing we have outstanding is, of course, our pool study and hopefully um, addressing the condition of bone pool either through its replacement or renovation. The pool study raft really was, we weren't, I don't think Jeremiah or I were very happy with it. Uh, it's kind of pro forma, if you will, and didn't address the potential of renovating the existing facility. You know, when we had our scare two seasons ago, when we thought we had water leaking out, uh, you know, we started thinking about, well, what, did, what would it really mean to renovate this? Can we ever know whether or not what's there under the the concrete is adequate and, and has any longevity left to it. Um, the co Councilman Hunsucker has indicated that they can give us some guidance on that by doing a pool audit. So Jeremiah authorized them to proceed with a pool audit, small add-on to the contract, not high enough to get it back here. So they started that on the 8th of February. Should be done this week, the 22nd. When they do that, they will incorporate those findings into the feasibility study and it will give us guidance on whether or not it's reasonable to uh, renovate bone pool or we need to replace it. Replacement options for it is what plugged in for the, uh, the cost thereof, which is what plugged in for all that. So that should be coming very soon as well. Hopefully, coming back to you in March so we can make some decisions about that. Uh, we're proceeding with the same plan as last year as it relates to operation of the pool. Uh, I still going to be involved in doing that. We've given some thought to are we ready to take that on ourselves? If you recall, our deal with the Y is that we they collect all the revenue and they provide the staffing. For the pool uh, in exchange for that, and then they bill us for anything that it costs them in excess of the revenue that they collect. Well, we have a pending uh, over a $30,000 bill for last year. So we're drilling down on what that actually um, consists of because it wasn't itemized. So we'll see. But you know, if that's the kind of situation we're going to be in on a regular basis, that that relationship. But it's too early. Do we still have oversight on the operational component of that? Because back when we did the original agreement, it was kind of like the first year we budgeted a certain amount of money, and then they came back to us and said it wasn't enough. And then so I remember then City Administrator Shane Horn said that you know that going forward that we're going to have a seat at the table for how they operate the pool, like. You know, overcast or weather or whatnot, then we would have some kind of uh, authority to kind of help them manage it when it comes from a revenue expense standpoint. So has that changed since then? Since or well, I mean, it's really they're very dependent on whether they deliver their personnel on a given day, right? Right. So we have. I wouldn't say we have a lot of control right now over, uh, you know, whether it's open on a particular day. Manager. So the bill we got is that additional from the chemicals and and just the overall maintenance of it. It was an additional bill. Well, it's probably mostly staff related, but yes, it's the the that revisiting of the contract resulted in an amendment that provides for this. That after the at the end of the year they bill bill us for what it has cost them in excess of what they earn from the revenues either through admission fees. How many years have we been in that contract? Back when the rec department was eliminated, right, right shortly after that. So that's when we got an agreement with the YMCA to kind of help collaborate the recreational opportunities for the kids and then also the pool. So, but I remember like we we had a discussion here saying that you know it's like because it's easy to operate an entity without using your own money. You have a certain amount of money set aside. But if you go over it, you go over it. But if you don't have to see at the table to get some checks and balances there, that's when right. we can get a bill exceeding what we probably thought, I'm guessing. So 
I mean, I don't think it was, it certainly wasn't the case that they were open more than we had hoped they'd be open. Quite the opposite of it. Less than it's not that they you know, had too many people there. Yeah, because I didn't know how, I was just concerned if you have, you know, eight lifeguards and you have five kids in the pool, like, because no, who's sending somebody home? That's, yeah. that's our thing, you know, so. Dictated by, you know, we, we want it to be fully staffed so that we have the opportunity, because that limits how many people you can have at every time. Right. Uh, it's probably seven or eight years. And we've been taking a hit every year? Or is, has, yes, has there's always something, but this was, I mean, it was surprising to me that it was as much as we'll see what we'll really say that. With Adrian Public Schools, do we get similar bills at the they're going to get? No, their program is different. They have a certain budget and we participate up to a point in you know whatever the operation program is. Do and you know they send the proposed invoice to Jeremiah for his review. Uh, and he's yeah, since he's been here, obviously knows very much about that program. Sort of have a seat at the table in terms of discussing what we think about program. You know, I used to get invoices out of the blue when before uh, we turned it over to him. And it's a front end. <laughs> you know, knowing exactly like lacrosse, I always talk about the lacrosse equipment. You know, it was unknown to me that lacrosse was an up and coming sport, and I get a bill for lacrosse sticks. But, but he's more, much more proactive in terms of knowing what's coming from the school. So I think that partnership is on pretty solid footing. So separate from that, capital items that uh, we expect to accomplish in the upcoming year to include the remainder of this fiscal year and next. Uh, we hope to do some renovation of the Crescent Park timber structures. There's a lot of boards that need to rest out there. Uh, he hopes to install a gate at Island Park. Very difficult to monitor after all the activity going into Island Park. And so entry gate there and so forth the one we have at Heritage. Uh, new baskets for the disc golf out at Heritage Park and then he plans to redo uh, the basketball courts at Parish and Dunlop Parks. One of them needs to be expanded slightly as well. So three point line is quite painted correctly. Um, that's kind of it in terms of what I wanted to Update you on, as I said, the main thing I wanted to talk about was pickleball court. I assume no heartburn in terms of covering the, the extra cost, whatever that comes out to be. I think, that's our this year. I think we all gave direction yeah. that we wanted something yep. just outside of painted lines and stuff like that. So yep. I prefer taking out a fund balance instead of the oil trust, because obviously that's in the market compared to what we're getting in our money market account or where we have that part. So. Uh, Okay. So, nothing more on recreation. Uh, <laughs> uh, we'll talk about uh, downtown food trust. Jay, you want to tell uh, the commissioners what happened at DDA? Uh, DDA meeting uh, on February 8th, we made a recommendation to approve the use of food trucks in downtown parking lots, still observing the 100 foot rule. That we have in place and then limiting in some parking lots where they're just not feasible at distance or you know or because of the business the, the busyness that takes place in those lots and i think michelle had you can see right there on the screen where the, the green spot would be the allowable locations the nice thing is respecting the 100 foot rule as more restaurants come in that space decreases so as we get more restaurants in the downtown area those spaces become smaller so we're respecting the brick and mortars but providing opportunities when, when those aren't available. So that would be our recommendation from the DEA. We voted uh, unanimously by the DEA board to recommend that to the mission. This was always in our contemplation when we drafted the ordinance. Uh, you'll recall you wanted to kind of go slow. 
as it relates to how we did have comments when we were considering the ordinance from downtown uh, restaurants uh, concerned about the competition. That's what the 100 foot rule is about. You can't have it uh, a food truck within uh, a mobile food vending unit within 100 feet of a brick and mortar restaurant unless you get a waiver from that restaurant. Uh, you know, so as Jay says, that's the green that's currently represented on there. You know, for example, down at the Church Street lot, if uh, something opens in what's now being called Park House, the former Hammerman building, or you know, uh, Cotton Brewing gets back on its feet somehow uh, with the use of that space, then that would you know shift that line away from the back of those buildings. But uh, Currently, this would, would be uh, the opportunity, and uh, yeah. So I would I would also uh, support this idea. This is what we had in mind: sort of the, the back of the lot locations um, available for mobile food vending. People can get an annual permit and decide when they want to park there. We still designate per the ordinance where the actual spots within the municipal lots are. Where a unit can park. But, uh, be nice to have that uh, as an opportunity, uh, uh, dur particularly during uh, uh, activities <coughs> downtown when we get a lot of people downtown. But we found that uh, there's a lot of interest in, uh, in utilizing uh, available space during those times. Open that up to any thoughts that the Commission may have uh, on the matter. You were in favor of that. We bring back a modified resolution to just adopt the the locations by resolution. Are there any restrictions in terms of numbers at any given point in time? Um, it, if we do it like we've done other public locations like parks, we would establish a number that can be enough. just not quite clear so jay this is if we don't close down the street correct right? that's correct okay making sure so if there is an event that happens downtown where we're closing the street first fridays they could be on the streets in other places outside of these green sections on the street correct on that is street. not the parking lot but on right. the street on yes. the street yes okay and those get changed depending on businesses as well right like there's there's limited spaces right now where that could be but there are some spaces on the street. okay so this isn't all of the spaces this is only spaces in parking lots so these are the spaces that you could utilize as a mobile food vending unit operator yeah. right, on your own in some places, you know, some cities allow them to park on the public street. That would be something you could do as well, but we haven't gone that far and aren't recommending it go that far. Um, you know, this would be separate from any of that. We treat the street closures as an event onto itself, right? So when we've approved the street closure, then mobile food vending can be part of that if it's one of the distance requirements that was tied to being done closure but this would be something that an operator could do on their own decide, you know, the week. yeah i feel like okay. such and such a weekend is going to be a good one i want to park my unit back to the church just wanted to be sure i understand okay so that's what we're looking at any concerns? Oh, no. We all good? All right. So we'll bring a resolution back uh, next time to effectuate that. That is all I have there. We want to yep. open it up for public comment. At this time, we will be in public comment. Just to reiterate, there's a three minute time limit. You will hear the alarm go off if you bypass, if you go past the three minute time limit. We will begin inside the chambers first, and then when there's no more public comment, we will open it up to Zoom participants. And for the record, please state your name and address. Which... All right, hearing no comment, public comment inside the chambers will now open it up to Zoom participants.
All right, hearing no comments, may I get a motion to adjourn? So moved. So moved. Support. Um, all in favor say aye. 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 Meeting is adjourned, and we will begin our regular meeting at 7 p.m. out in the regular chambers. Thanks. I call to order the Adrian City Commission meeting for February 20th, 2023. If everyone would please rise for a moment of silence and the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge Roll call, please. Mayor Heath. Present. Commissioner Ho. Present. Commissioner Roberts. Present. Commissioner Miller. Present. Commissioner Strayer is absent. Commissioner Castleberry. Present. Commissioner Goss. Present. All commission members present with the exception of Commissioner Strayer. May I get a motion to excuse Commissioner Strayer? Move excuse Commissioner Strayer. Or I have a motion from Commissioner Helt with a second from Commissioner Castleberry. Roll call, please. Commissioner Helt. Yes. Commissioner Roberts. Yes. Commissioner Miller. Yes. Commissioner Castleberry. Yes. Commissioner Gauss. Yes. Mayor Heath. Yes. Motion to excuse Commissioner Strayer is approved by an all yes vote. Mayor, can I uh, request to move <clears throat> CR 23-028 off the consent agenda onto the regular agenda? Commissioner Castleberry, do, is your mic on? Yes. <laughs> May I get a motion to adopt the consent agenda with the amendment of the removal of CR 23-028 to the regular agenda? So move. Support. I have a motion from Commissioner Helt with a second, for, I mean, a motion from Commissioner Gauss with a second from Commissioner Helt. Roll call, please. Commissioner Roberts. Yes. Commissioner Miller. Yes. Commissioner Castleberry. Yes. Commissioner Gauss. Yes. Mayor Heath. Yes. Commissioner Hope. Yes. Consent agenda approved with the removal of CR-0228 to the regular agenda by is approved by an all yes vote. Under ordinances, ordinance number 23-002. This is a first reading and introduction of an ordinance to amend the City of Adrian zoning ordinance section 3.1 of article three to the extent of deleting 2930 North Adrian Highway from the planned unit development district and including the same in the I-1 light industrial district. This is a first reading only. The next meeting will have a second reading and a vote. Moving on to special orders. Special order dash four is a public hearing to hear and consider comments regarding the special assessment role for Maumee Court reconstruction SAD number 396. I call this public hearing to order. Any of those wishing to speak on this may approach the microphone and speak on this matter or on Zoom. Good evening, commissioners. My name is Chad Johnson. I live at Two Mommy Court. Um, we've had a couple different iterations of the um, of the cost of the work and I did meet with uh, Matt and Brett at my residence and reviewed the uh, the quantities. We did agree on a quantity. However, and as small as it may be, I'm still being overcharged $66.34. My greater concern is the uh, status or the current status of the work and how it was left um, after the construction season. Um, we've noticed in the freeze thaw that we've had an unseasonably warm Winter, we're at a, a deficit of an inch to an inch and a half of the uh, berm or the um, boulevard between the uh, sidewalk and the edge of curb. It continues to settle. Um, there's also a low spot on the, the west side of the inbound lane adjacent to the, uh, to the plates um, residence. There's also low spots that create puddles and ice at the end as you approach Maumee Street <clears throat> from Maumee Court. And I know you're all aware Maumee Street's a very busy street. Um, 
my concern is what um, leverage does the city have in place? I understand that there wasn't retainage held on the contract, which is an industry standard to hold a minimum of 10% until the work is satisfactory, satisfactorily complete. Um, I've been witness to that. I've been in construction for over 30 years as a project manager, and that's just an industry standard. And if a contractor is unwilling to sign a contract or enter into a contract with that stipulation, I really don't want him as a um, doing work on behalf of the city. So I was just, do we have anything in place that can give us the assurity that when the spring comes, we'll have the uh, bad spots of the paving addressed, the restoration of the um, area behind the curb, the back curb, the island in the center of the court. Um, that's my main concern. And I guess that's all I have for now, other than the amount of my actual bill, like I said. Do I follow up with Matt or will there be another? We're not allowed to answer you. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> I guess that's all I have for now. Thank you for your time. Hello again, Paul Wisniewski, 12 Maumee Court. Regarding the cost of the uh, supposed improvements to the court, the uh, the curb and gutter, the, I guess and as I sent all of you an email this morning. I don't know if you opened it or not, but who owns the curb and gutter? Who's responsible for repairing it? You know, the curb and gutter, the roadway was neglected for 40 plus years, and all of a sudden we replace it, and it's cost to the residents. The other issue is the driveway approach. Who owns that? Who's responsible for that? And I believe the resident is responsible for that. I don't know how you feel, but again, my driveway was pulled out, even though I requested it not. And the driveway was replaced with concrete at my cost. Again, I do not agree with that. I don't believe it's right. Uh, I'm responsible for maintaining that driveway, not you, that driveway approach, not you. So I'm the one that would have to repair it as well. That's all. Thank you. Oh, and by the way, the original letter does not even mention the driveway approach. Hello. My name is James Murray. Uh, I live at Nine Mommy Court. Uh, for the last seven years, uh, my wife and I have lived there next to some really good neighbors. It was new skis. <laughs> And I'm here tonight to do my first civic duty here in front of uh, the commission here in Adrian. Um, um, first of all, I'd like to say I'm generally pleased, and I think everybody else is in the neighborhood for the work. Um, uh, like most human beings, things are not perfect. And I concur with Wisniewski's and some other members of the court that there is some work to do yet um, on the median between the street and the sidewalk. Uh, was, wasn't filled very well, wasn't seated well, some things like that. Um, but generally, uh, having been here seven years, I actually want to give the city some kudos. Uh, we're very pleased with the, uh, <clears throat> the new water lines, uh, gas lines, improvement to the road, which really needed to be improved. And I'm not all that familiar, really, uh, unlike my neighbor, Paul, <laughs> with the uh, with the nuances and specifics about who has control over the streets and gutters and, and sidewalks and so on. I'd have to look into that a little bit more. But I'm a concerned citizen now. We enjoy living in Adrian, and we wanted to give you a few kudos and say there are a few things left to do because humans are noted for a lot of things, but being perfect ain't one of them. That's what I have to say. I now call this public hearing closed and we will move on to resolutions. Moving on to resolution CR 23-028, 
we need to have an amendment to that resolution. What is written in the agenda is correct, but the resolution is wrong. So may I get a motion to adopt the resolution with the amendment from administration to say resolution to approve the sale of 637 Tabor Street to Ephraim Cacario Noval. I'm sorry if I said that wrong, but um, the resolution actually read the wrong address. So may I get a motion to adopt that resolution with the corrected and amended 637 Tabor Street? So moved. Are there any public comments? Are there any commissioner comments? I have a motion from Commissioner Roberts with a second from Commissioner Miller. Roll call, please. Commissioner Castleberry. Yes. Commissioner Gowes. Yes. Mayor Heath. Yes. Commissioner Holt. Yes. Commissioner Roberts. Yes. Commissioner Miller. Yes. Resolution is approved with a change to the address to read 637 Tabor Street by a 6-0 vote. Resolution R23-005 is from engineering. It is a resolution to confirm the special assessment rule for SAD number 396. May I get a motion to adopt the resolution? Move we adopt the resolution. Support. Are there any public comments on this resolution? Are there any commissioner comments? Madam Mayor, I'd like to comment. First of all, Mr. Johnson, I would direct your questions for answers to the city administrator, Mr. Elliott, and he could work with staff to get those answers. My comments, as most of you know, last, at least there are certainly members of the commission. At our last meeting, we were faced with three similar um, resolutions uh, to approve and confirm the assessment rolls for three other SADs. Um, I did not support those. And the reason that I didn't is, and I have the same concern tonight, is we have a special, a special public hearing to hear and consider comments. And I don't feel that three or four minutes between the public hearing and the resolution to approve it is adequate time for me to consider the comments that I heard tonight or that I heard at the last meeting. So therefore, I, and my, my preference would be to have a public hearing at one meeting and give us until the next meeting to consider what we've heard, the emails that we've received, and, and, and then call for a vote. Um, that's not the way we're doing that tonight. Um, and, um, you know, that's just my feeling. That's an explanation as to why I did, made the decision that I did at the last meeting, and I'll probably make the same decision again tonight. Thank you. Commissioner Roberts. I understand that we received the email regarding, uh, workmanship and that, uh, Mr. Elliott replied to that email. Mr. Elliott, would you be interested in, um, discussing that with the public? Well, I think it was the issues uh, that you heard summarized tonight uh, in terms of workmanship. And we do have uh, the same contractor coming back to town uh, this construction season. Uh, Matt does intend to have them address the puddling issues uh, on the street. Uh, it was his uh, evaluation of the situation that it wasn't uh, an error of the paving contractor that led to those puddling, but more likely uh, the way that uh, it was staked. And you know, they they just followed the curb line and in, in uh, applying the pavement. And the, you know, as it turned out, there was a dip, and that will be addressed this year. There will not be any additional cost to the uh, property owners along that street uh, for that correction. Likewise, we understand there's still landscaping that needs to be done in the spring and uh, DPW intends to complete that as well. Uh, I think it's important to keep in mind when we talk about special assessment districts that you know, we've had this practice of uh, assessing the cost of curb and 
uh, driveway approach for particular properties frontage uh, that are on the benefiting that are benefited by the street. There's no magic to that. It doesn't need to be the curb and, uh, um, and driveway approach. It's, it's simply a mechanism for finding a way to make local street funds go a little further uh, and have the benefited residents share uh, in the cost of that to a degree. Uh, it would be within your purview and many places do this, that local streets don't get repaved unless uh, there's a substantial comp, uh, participation by the benefited property owners. And uh, when we looked at what the cost of uh, an example um, property uh, assessment was in relation to the total project cost, it was like 3% of the project cost. And I think going forward, we're trying to set up this year uh, 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 just a standard percentage that we will assess to benefited property owners based on their frontage, uh, as opposed to something like that, maybe 3% of the pro total project costs allocated amongst the benefited properties on a local street, uh, you know, uh, in proportion to their uh, frontage on that street. So we get out of this confusion about whether or not you're really, you're paying for your curb or you're paying for your driveway approach. That's really not the intent of it. The intent is just to have a little bit of skin in the game in terms of participating in the cost of what is a local street that is there to benefit really only particular properties. The definition of a local street is that it exists to provide access to particular properties as opposed to streets that collector streets or arterial streets that convey traffic through uh, town, you know, that uh, are fed into by many streets. And so as we do these, we do look for that participation, but it, it's not, um, yeah, it, it's not really the intent to charge people dollar for dollar for their uh, particular uh, uh, curb that's in front of their house or the driveway approach that they have. It's just, it's a, it, they're benefited by the street project uh, the street project is a local street project. It's it's appropriate and fair that those properties that are specially benefited participate to some degree. And we only require a small amount of participation. Uh, and it's just a formula, to, like I say, to make sure our local street funds go as far as they can in doing work uh, uh, throughout the city each year. Hope that answers your question. It does, and I did some research on this on my own, if, and correct me if I'm wrong, and maybe Mr. Gluley, you can chime in, that there's about a dozen different reasons that the state of Michigan allows communities, cities, townships, counties to do special assessment districts. Um, one of them is local streets, doesn't say anything about curb and gutters. That's just a, if I can summarize, that's just a way for us mm -hmm. to, um, break down or determine that cost. Um, yeah, it doesn't really have anything to do with the curb and gutters or curb and not gutters, the curb and entrances to your driveways. There's lots of different reasons that we can do a special assessment district. We can do it for parks. We can do it for lighting. We can do it for, and of course, I meant to print out all the different ways um, or all the different reasons that that a community can um, break down the cost amongst all the residents in the area. So is that, am I, was I reading? Yeah, that's correct. Part? And our charter provides the same. And, and uh, uh, like you say, it's just a recognition that uh, those properties are specially benefited. And uh, the assessment simply needs to be in proportion to that benefit. So, well, for example, the resolutions that you had on consent agenda tonight for next year's or this year, this coming construction season's projects talk about, and I, I think last year's were the same, talk about assessing them based on frontage or sidage on the street, uh, you know, and that, that's just a recognition that some people have more a wider lot, some people have a narrower lot, some people are a corner lot sometimes. Uh, you know, that that is the most common way of assessing it. And the curb and gutter and driveway approach was, you know, 
somebody's bright idea about making it seem like you're getting something uh, special for your property, right. but you are getting something special for your property when a local street is reconstructed or repaved. And I don't, like I say, I hope in the future we're going to stick to percentages and not try to um, sort of go through the motions of proving that, you know, we built this driveway approach for you. Right. Mr. Galuli, do you have anything to add to that discussion? Not particularly. Special assessment districts are uh, used in the manners in which you indicated. They're used frequently with regard to police and fire protection when there's an industrial uh, business that might require a police precinct closer, a firehouse closer, a large factory or things of that nature. Um, this special assessment district is noted up properly. It's for an uh, intended use. It is not a hidden tax, so to speak. And I provided today under separate letter, uh, my legal opinion, which uh, disagrees with a couple emails that the city had with regard to the creation of a special assessment district and whether or not it violated the law of the Michigan Supreme Court in a case called Bolt, B-O-L-T versus City of Lansing. Thank you. I just want to clarify um, for one of my comments, just, you know, I, I have the same concern for mommy court. I, I drive by it all the time and I was watching how long it was taking and some of the, the things that were happening there. And I felt really bad for those residents, but um, I, I've seen the workmanship as well and have the same concerns. And I just want to be assured and let them be assured that, you know, they're going to be assessed this special assessment role. Are they, that it is for sure going to be fixed and, what action do they take if it is still puddling or if it isn't fixed or, you know, where do they go from here? Um, I'm just, you know, looking out for that because I do see the same concerns when I've, when I've been there. And also, you know, when it comes to if, if a bill is not correct and getting that rectified. Yeah, so uh, Matt Tomaszewski, our parks, or our, sorry, our DPW director, used to be our parks director too, will be monitoring that work this year and has committed to getting uh, Gherkin paving back out there to make those particular mm -hmm. repairs and uh, either the contract or, or DPW staff will complete the, the landscaping as well. Um, you know, we have, a, we have the same interest as the residents do in having our project done right. And uh, it, at the end of the day, it's a public street. Uh, that's all public right away. And, and we want it to be uh, safe and appropriate uh, for all, all the citizens, not just those on Mommy Court, but especially for those on Mommy Court. I have a motion from Commissioner Helt with a second from Commissioner Roberts. Roll call, please. Commissioner Miller. Yes. Commissioner Castleberry. Yes. Commissioner Gauss. No. Mayor Heath. Yes. Commissioner Helt. Yes. Commissioner Roberts. Yes. Resolution adopted by a five yes, one no vote. Moving on to miscellaneous, there are re oh sorry. Madam Mayor. Yes. I could have zoned out, but I don't believe I have. Did we actually vote on the consent agenda? Yes. Mm -hmm. Sorry about that. It's okay. Uh, there are miscellaneous reports in your packet. Um, are there any questions or comments on those reports? All right, moving on to public comment. At this time, it is time for public comment. There is a three minute time limit. And for the record, please state your name and address. We will begin inside the city chambers first. And after we are done with public comment, then we will then open it up to the Zoom participants. My name is Robert Banky, 256 Ironwood Drive in Adrian, Michigan. My comments are from my role as a private citizen. In response to the increase of fees imposed on community groups wanting to host a parade or street fair within the city of Adrian, I am proud to announce the creation of the Adrian Diversity Parade and Street Fair Fund, a 501c3 organization that is part of the Lenway Community Foundation. 
It is important to make sure that organizations and groups represented by diverse and marginalized communities have funds to pay for these new fees imposed by the city. Money should never be an object in deciding when or where to celebrate our rich culture and heritage with our fellow city residents with a parade or street fair. It is my hope that we continue to keep these important celebrations here in Adrian and not drive them away because of the new city fees. In an effort to keep Pride, Juneteenth, Cinco de Mayo parades and events in the city, I ask for your support and the support from members of our community. Please be the first to donate to these uh, important events. Over the last four months, I have been writing grants and sought out funding opportunities. I am honored to announce that Meyer, Midwest Energy and Communication, and private donors have established a three to one match for all donations raised up to $1,500. For every dollar raised and donated to this new Lenaway Community Foundation grant, um, the grants and donors will provide a $3 match up to the first $1,500. This is an opportunity to make $25 make a $100 impact or a $250 donation make a $1,000 impact. Thanks to the community support, the Adrian Diversity and Street Fair Fund will help ensure parades and street fairs can take place for years to come and organizers can focus on organizing and celebrating within our community, staying in Adrian and not having to worry about how to pay city fees. To make a donation, you can go to lenawaycommunityfoundation.com and click on the Donate Now button. Please indicate Adrian Diversity Parade and Street Fair Fund in your donation notes, or donations can also be made to the Lenway County Community Foundation at 1440 West Maumee Street, or you're more than welcome to email me at banky, B-E-H-N-K-E, 168 at gmail.com. As of tonight, we have raised $600 towards the challenge match. That's $2,400 um, dedicated to these three great community cultural organizations. Thank you. Hello, Keen Ramos here. I, of course, still have some concerns about the parades, as you've heard, uh, well, mainly about the uh, street closures part of it. But from uh, going forward, I hope to see some revisions later on as you get used to the policy. But also, I want to make you all aware that this coming Friday is a homeless awareness vigil at the old courthouse, and we hope to have some of your support. That is important, isn't it? All right. Um, <clears throat> it will be starting at five o'clock and we'll have a few speakers there, including many that you do know. And we look forward to seeing you there. Thank you. Hearing no more public comment inside the chambers, we will now open it up to Zoom participants. Zoom participants, you will see the time on your screen and also please state your name and address. Hearing no more public comment, are there any commissioner comments? <clears throat> commissioner Hell? I met with uh, our police chief, Vince Emmerich, last Thursday for about an hour and a half. Um, talked about a topic that kind of makes folks uncomfortable. Um, it's crime in the city. Uh, after last week's events, um, my phone buzzed and I'm sure my colleagues' phones buzzed and, and, and asked, what are we gonna do about this? Um, our uh, previous city administrator, uh, Nathan Bird, I remember I met with him and, and we were trying to collaborate, you know, more so of a small, a small term vision. And he said, our number one problem right now in Adrian is the crime rate. And, and I asked, you know, being a, a lifelong resident of Adrian, I asked what, what does that entail? Like, what, what, so he goes, when he searched Adrian, when he applied, um, you know, obviously coming from a smaller community, he realized that he wanted, you know, he wanted to 
go to a bigger city with more resources and so on, but the crime rate is high. And so I remember him telling me that years in the past, but just recently I started to, to dig into this, especially after the last few weeks. Weeks. And, and, so, and, and so, and so, what is our crime rate? So, so and that with us, I asked some questions, get some good questions, get some good battle back and forth. I couldn't understand how the department is. And so, the second part of our jobs are to find not only our city administrator, but also our department has the tools in their toolbox that they need to, whether it's public safety, whether it's engineering or any department, they have to have the tools to succeed to do our job. And I truly believe that public safety, especially from, from, our, from a police standpoint, it starts with them. And so knowing the police chief for seven years since I've been up here, my, my, it, was a, it was a really good meeting and I, and I really wanted to pump him up and, and say, uh, essentially, Vince, what do you need? You know. Um, we've had budget issues in the past, departments are getting cut, we had no money in our fund balance, and, 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 and he knows that. And, and, and so, but now we are in a different position now. And so um, I had somebody read over the comp, uh, one of the comments on one of the media sites about, about the shooting, and, and, and one of the comments was the city commission needs to, and the mayor needs to focus on crime more than blight. Well, if you study blight enough, you know that those two things go hand in hand. You don't have a safe city and high crime. Oh, I'm sorry, you, you don't have a city with no blight, but has high crime. I guarantee every city that has high crime has high blight. So that goes hand in hand. And so asking questions, you know, what's our officer per thousand residents? Are we at the average? Are, 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 are we where we should be? And I understand that department. Um, we've done a good job, my, my, myself and our colleague, you know, my colleagues of, raising the rate of pay so we can get good officers to stay here and not be a stepping stone, but it's still very difficult to hire police officers nationwide. Um, so if we were to hire 10 cops, can, can our police chief get 10 candidates to, you know, you know, to apply? Um, but that's not our job. We, you know, we understand that my, my reason we're wanting to meet with him is to tell him that I'm not afraid to talk about this. I know our citizens are, are, are tired of seeing it. You know, we have some parts in our city that need some attention. And I, I truly believe that bad guys stay where they're comfortable. I think that we have to make some sections of our city uncomfortable for those bad guys. And, and so in closing, it was more of a, a, a pump up meeting for him. He is a very great chief. That department does a lot. I mean, I mean they're overworked. Uh, there's a lot of issues in Adrian, and I support them not 100%, 200%. Um, but I made it very clear to him, it's like budget time's right. The city administrator, I met with him the day before. He said, you know, it, now is the time to do something. And so I want to incentivize him to come to budget with a plan and what we can do collectively to help him achieve that plan. Because, again, you know, I, I looked in the website, clicked on his name. I didn't even know we had a crime map on our website up-to-date live we, you know that that information is available um but again i'm i'm one that's been up here for seven years and i'm not afraid to have uncomfortable conversations i think that the public doesn't want us to have our head in the sand when it comes to some of this stuff and if you don't have a safe city nobody's gonna want to do business here nobody's gonna want to live here and, and 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 that's just the truth and so um i'm very happy that that he does have some things in his budget that that, that will help alleviate that but i want him to come strong because again as citizens, it's our job. We are not police officers up here. We are not, um, you know, public safety, but it's our job to provide those departments the tools they need to keep us safe. So um, again, I just want to start the conversation with my colleagues that we need to get in the room. We're gonna have budget meetings up here soon and figure out a way to, to uh, provide that department with the resources they need to keep us safe. Because if we're not safe, um, it could spiral out downhill real quick. So those are my comments. Thank you. Um, I'll keep my comments short. I want to recognize Mr. Benke as an involved community community citizen who really cares about the committee. What you've done tonight, Bob, and in taking the initiative to organize this group and the fund, um, I think is extraordinary. I appreciate you doing that and look forward to having members of the community vigorously uh, support the campaign. Thank you.
I would just like to remind the community that there is a Black History Community Celebration. Um, it's going to be this Sunday, February 26th from 3 to 4.30 p.m. It is for the entire community. And in our celebration of this month, it is at Christ Temple Ministries on Deerfield Road. So I just, we really hope to see the community out there. Um, and um, it is, it is always a great time of celebrating Black History Month every year. And um, we're really excited and hoping for great attendance this year as well um, to celebrate this at the end of our, as we come to a close for our Black History Month. May I get a motion to adjourn? So move. Support. All in favor say aye. 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 Meeting is adjourned.